Solar Auxilia are one of those really cool looking armies that Forge will produce that, whilst looking awesome, often end up outside the price range of many people, which is a shame because I know that many people would love to use these models in their games of 40k as stand-ins for their regular Astra Militarum. And that's the reason why I've put together this miniature here and this video, in an attempt to make a more cost-effective alternative to Forge World's Solar Auxilia. So the key to this kit bash are these components from the third-party bits manufacturer, Anvil Industry, and we have these two items from their Gothic Void range, the helmets and the hazardous environment torsos. You can see straight away that these components take inspiration from the almost steampunk spacesuit stylings that the Solar Auxilia uh, have, and these will make for the main focus points of our models. However, as these components are resin, there is one thing we need to do first, and that is clean them. Resin and metal components can often still have mold release agents on them, and uh, they're left over from the casting process, but this can be easily removed with a bowl of hot soapy water. If you don't remove the agents, you will find that your paint doesn't quite stick properly and that can lead to patchy paint jobs later on. So it's important to take the time and clean it off here. So just leave your components in the water to soak for a while until the water is cool enough to safely handle. Then you can make sure that the agent is fully removed by using a, a nail brush or a toothbrush and scrubbing the components. Once this is done, you can leave them to one side to dry off before clipping the component from the sprue and removing any injection points or mold lines with a knife as you would do with any other plastic component. So we have the torso and the head, but for now our budget solar auxilia is about as helpful as a drunken pacifist because he's legless and armless, and never mind. Anyway, the kit that will provide these extra components will be the Tempesta Scions. Their scale is correct, they have separate legs and arms, and their armoured aesthetic helps to fit in with the theme that we're looking to create. The only problem is the dome top that's designed to fit inside the dip of the torso on the Scions. Our Gothic Void torsos have a flat bottom, so we need to fix this to get a good join. Using a hobby saw, I started to make a cut just above the groin plate and cut right the way through across the waist. After cleaning this up with a file and knife, I was then left with a flat top that I could super glue nicely to the torso. Now, the key eyed among you will have noticed a slight angle that I accidentally created here, but this didn't turn out to be too much of a problem later on, which is good news for anyone else with wonky soaring skills. The arms and weapons for our auxilia are also coming from the Tempesta Scions kit, but we need to make a few adjustments to make them appear a little further away from the hotshot less guns and a little closer to the solar auxilia weaponry. These involved first removing the pipe feeds from the bottom of the rifle using some clippers before clipping away the scopes from the top of the rifle, leaving the center part as sort of a hollow site. Finally, we need to clip away the barrel of the rifle. This will be replaced with a more archaic looking galvanic rifle found in the Skatari Rangers kit. Once you have your rifle picked out, we'll be making a cut just behind one of the bands. Just make sure that you hold down the end of the barrel here, otherwise you'll be crawling around the floor looking for it when it disappears. Just like I had to do here. You can then glue these two components together and create a slightly different looking last weapon that vaguely resembles the more archaic looking weaponry of the Auxilia. So, with your weapon created, we now need to attach these arms to the torso. Luckily for us, the width between the shoulders on the Gothic Void set and the Scions are roughly the same, so the arms will fit. However, where you will experience problems is around the shoulder pads. As the torso features pipes just above the shoulders, you will find that they interfere with the raised shoulder pads of the Tempestus arms. Luckily, this isn't too severe, and it is nothing a little trimming of both halves of a knife can't fix. Just keep making small adjustments and doing frequent dry fits until you're happy that the join is good. You can then bring your super glue once again and fix them into place. With your arms in place, you can now decide on which direction you wish your head to point before super gluing it to the torso. As these components are designed to fit together, you should have no issues here, and this is probably the easiest part of this entire tutorial. The final step is to cover up the joints around the waist. Luckily, the science kit has some handy ammo pouches and grenades that will fit nicely here, masking the seam at the waist, as well as adding a little more bulk to the model. So here we have the fully assembled model, and now you know how to go about combining Anvil Industry components with the Tempesta Science Kit. However, I don't feel that you can truly gauge how good a conversion looks until you see it painted, so let's just do that. This is going to be a quick overview of the painting process, but I will be covering all the steps and all the paints that I use. So I began with a black primer sprayed over the whole model. I'm using an airbrush for these first steps, as it was pretty damp outside, but you can use rattle cans if you do prefer. 
Over the top of this, I then sprayed some of Games Workshop's Wraithbone to give us a light tan color. You'll notice that I'm keeping those darker areas in the deeper recesses to help give the model a little more definition. Over this light tan, I wanted a way to get some base colors down quickly, and contrast paints are great for this quick proof of concept kind of work. I went for a slightly thinner layer of Acalian Green over the armor, followed by Skeleton Horde across the fabric areas to give them a pale tan color. Next up, I hit the areas of the model that will either be black leather or metal, first with a base coat of Basilicon and Grey, and then once this is completely dried, I followed up with a layer of Black Templar. Layering the black over the grey like this allows for a dark result while still benefiting from the shading variations that contrast paints create. The leather pouches and braces were painted with wildwood before finally applying some Blood Angels Red to the visor and wrist screen and then some Gilman flesh to the small area of exposed skin. The metal areas were then given a rough highlight of lead belcher to give them that subtle metallic sheen. At this point, the model was looking a little too bright for my liking, so I gave everything a protective gloss varnish before spraying a mixture of AK Interactive Streaking Grime for DAC vehicles mixed with some Abtai Lung's Matte Thinner. Now, I'm using an airbrush again here, but you can use a brush to apply this if you prefer. I built up several thin layers of this greyish brown grime, completely covering the model. After giving it a chance to dry, I then used a mixture of brushes and cotton swabs dipped with some mineral spirits or white spirits to remove some of the grime from the surfaces. I applied a rough textured base to this, followed by some weathering powders before sealing everything in with a matte varnish. The result was this gritty, solo auxilia look-alike achieved in around an hour's work. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the conversion. It looks fairly close to Solar Auxilia, and the Anvil industry components fit nicely alongside Games Workshop components too. But the crunch really is the price point. How does this conversion hold up against Forge World? Well, a 20-man squad of standard Solar Auxilia infantry costs £79, so we need to at the very least come under that price for the same number of troops. Boxes of Tempesta Scions retail at £22.50 each, but you can easily pick them up from discounted independent stockists for close to £19 each, and that's not even counting the stock collecting savings. So we're already looking at around £76. 20 heads and 20 torsos from Andal Industries uh, clocks in at £28 altogether, whereas the Zakatari Galvanic Rifles can be bought from bits resellers for between £2.50 and £5. So let's say £7 for 20 so that brings our grand total to £111, meaning these guys will cost you £32 more for a 20-man squad. So definitely not a saving. However, while you'll be spending more money, there are a few advantages. For example, all the extra components that you'll be left with from your science kits will give you all of your special weapons and command options without having to buy specific kits some of which are already quite pricey. You also have a little bit more room to mix and match, and plastic can often be easier to work with than resin. You could also reduce this cost down a bit by only using the torsos and not the heads, maybe avoiding using the Skatari Galvanic Rifles, or even just mixing them with regular Cadians instead. For a similar conversion, you'll be looking at close to £70 if you were to use Cadian legs, arms and heads instead. But of course, with either of these, you're still not getting actual Solar Auxilia models whilst paying extra for the privilege, and that's the biggest caveat of this video. But if you're looking for something with a similar style in your four games of 40k, and you want to give your Scions a slightly unique twist, then at least you have this option. As I already mentioned, the source of these components was Anvil Industry, and I'll include the links to them in the description below. If you have any suggestions of other regiments, legions, or chapters you would like to see me cover in these third-party kitbash videos, then let me know in the description below, along with what you thought of this conversion. So before I go, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your help with the cost of producing these videos really allows me to experiment more and try out new things like this tutorial. If you don't currently support me, but you would like to lend me a hand as well, I've included my Patreon page in the description below, or if you'd just like to make a one-off donation, I also have a PayPal link too. And for anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with others who also enjoy my channel, I set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.